Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise and joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust you are feeling bright and blessed in Jesus this morning, that you have your coffee in front of you, that you have your Bible with you, and that you are ready for a word from the Lord. Now, we're continuing our review in the book of Hosea. And before we begin today, I just want to give you a little teaser that the next book that we'll be reviewing is going to be the book of Romans. Now, speaking of the book of Romans, I also want to remind you that uh, today is November the 5th, and we've been reading, hopefully we've been reading together, five chapters of the New Testament each day. Now, if you continue to do that, by the end of this month, you will have read the entire New Testament. And if we do that every month, that's 12 times a year, or 60 times in five years. 60 times you would have read the entire New Testament in a five-year period. Friends, there's no greater discipline that you could take on and nothing that will change your life in a greater fashion. So I highly encourage you to take on this discipline. Well, today we're in the book of Hosea. We're in chapter four. We're beginning at verse seven, which is where we left off yesterday. Now, if you'll remember the message from God yesterday was that my people are dying from lack of true biblical knowledge. There is an overwhelming supply of information, an overload of information, but true knowledge is hard to come by. And so he picks up with that thought in verse seven. He says, as they were increased, they sinned against me. The more people, the more sin. And he answers the reason for that in verse eight, when he says they set their heart on their iniquity. They set their heart on doing what they want to do instead of what I want them to do. And if you'll review your life for a moment, friends, you'll see that is exactly what you have done, exactly what I have done. We set our hearts on doing what we wanted to do. And in verse 9, we see the first problem among the people. It says, like the people, so shall be the priest, so shall be the leaders. So the leaders themselves aren't living a good example. The leaders themselves aren't following the ways of God. And that's most unfortunate because the people have no one to guide them. So what do they do? Well, in verse 13, it says, They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains. They burn incense upon the hills, under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Now, you may not completely understand this text, but what it is telling us is that the pagan practice was to offer their sacrifices upon the high places. So when you read about the high places in the Old Testament, always know that that is a reference to pagan worship. And God says, I don't want you to go to the high places to offer your sacrifices. I want you to go to the temple. But because the people have no one to look to as a role of leadership, they're left to do whatever is right in their own eyes. And that's dangerous. But we would have to look deeper and ask the question, why is this? Why are they disobeying God? Why are they offering these sacrifices? Well, in verse 19, it says, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. Now, in chapter 5, verse 4, it says, they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them. But look at the following seven words, and they have not known the Lord. You see, it's bad enough that the people are worshiping false gods, are following pagan practices. They are identifying with the pagan nations around them. It's bad enough that the priests are not living according to the ways of God and setting an example for the people. But where the real problem lies is told to us in Judges chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, which reads, Also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, in other words, all that generation had passed on to be with the Lord. And it says there arose another generation after them, and they knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. They forsook the Lord their God, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them, and they bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. 
You see, the problem that we see here is that the prior generation failed to pass on the knowledge of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, the judgments of the Lord to the following generation. And I want to end this time together today, friends, encouraging you to teach those that are coming up in the new generation. Pass on the ways of the Lord unto them. And we must do this very early on. Did you know that the Roman Catholics say if you give me a child between one and six years old, he'll be a Catholic for life? And what this tells us is the most instrumental days in the life of a young boy or girl is in their first six years of life. And so we must be teaching them the things of God. We must be teaching them the stories of the Bible. And not just an overload of information in these stories, but why God wants us to live a right life. And we must explain to them the inner nature that repels everything that God wants us to do. So we must spend more time explaining than telling. And that's the problem with the generation that is coming up right now. They know what the Bible says, many of them, but they don't understand why it says what it says because nobody is teaching them. And so friends, teach your children, teach your grandchildren, teach your nephews, teach your nieces. All of you have someone that you could be passing this information on to. And so teach them, plant these seeds. Because if we don't, the generation that is coming up behind us is going to be just like the generation that come up after the people of Israel who served God so faithfully. And yet within one generation, there was nothing about them that would indicate they are the people of God. So let us learn from what we are reading today and let us take this as a strong warning. For if we don't, as verse four tells us, they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredoms will be about them, and they will not have known the Lord. And their blood, friends, will be upon our hands. Well, we're going to end there today, friends. I trust that the word of the Lord through the book of Hosea, through the life of Hosea, is teaching you much. And that you will not be, as the word warns against, hearers only, but you will become doers of the word. Now, as the Father wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.